there is some sort of dream that's coming true. That's what I'm hearing. There is something that's start, starting to take shape. It doesn't mean that you know exactly how things are going to happen or when things are going to happen or why things are going to happen. It just feels like right now there's some sort of evidence that something is working out in your favor or some sort of direction that you're going in right now seems to be panning out so far. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Happy Friday, guys. We made it to another end of another week. I hope you guys are doing well. It's very, very good to see you all. Um, keeping with the vibe out here. Hold on, hold on, wait for it. There he goes, sorry. I was watching Orion chase his sister. Anyway, keeping up with the vibe here. We're staying outside. I'm really loving the vibe out here. You guys are loving it too. I notice this cute little solar flare we've got going on. Excellent. So welcome. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. So um, nothing really to say. Um, I'm definitely keeping with the energy of just not doing the monthly readings right now. Um, and unfortunately, it hasn't even panned out for uh, for. Patreon. Um, originally, I said that I wanted to do it for Patreon and not just the, um, not just YouTube, but it just didn't work out that way. Um, it felt like it was better to just give it all a rest for now. So we're keeping up with morning coffee, obviously, of course, um, and there will be some extra stuff over on Patreon when the time calls for it. I've been wanting to get like an, at least an oracle reading done. It just haven't hasn't felt right yet. So maybe I'll do that today. I definitely think I want to do that over the weekend or something like that. But if you're on Patreon, just keep an eye out for that, yeah? Okay. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything to say. So, uh, following suit for the week, we're using the Vice Versa Tarot as our main deck. We have the After Tarot as our clarifier. And then Oracle Guidance today has been chosen from the Mystical Shaman Oracle. Yeah? Excellent. Let's get into it and see what we've got for today. Here we go. Oh, wait, I should, I should say, just the general disclaimer, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, and also, it's a timeless reading, so whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then there's most likely a message for you in that, in the reading even if it doesn't quite make sense at the current moment. Yes? All right, guys, let's do it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, let's get into this. Five shuffles here to start. One. This is two. Oop. Three. Oh, oh, wait, here we go. Three. All right, the star has flipped out. We're going to take it. Four. Ooh, a leaf. And five. We're going to turn it. Yes, turn it. Okay. Ooh, come on now. Come on now. All right. So. The cats are having a lot of fun today. 
<laughs> Alright, so first card out so far is the star. And it's the side of the star in which we see the woman here that's normally pouring water. One thing of water is going onto the earth, the other is going into the lake, the river, the ocean. Um, and this is about renewal, healing, and it's also a, a wish fulfillment card, right? On this side of the card, we have the same woman, but we're seeing her from behind. And there's an apparition standing in front of her. And what I'm getting from this so far, you guys, is that there, there is some sort of dream that's coming true. That's what I'm hearing. And it, it may not necessarily feel like that right now. However, I feel like for somebody here, there is something that's start, starting to take shape, is what I want to say. Um, so if you see like this, this apparition here, or it's in the form of a, of a man, okay, that's fine. But to me, with the wish fulfillment aspect of this card, it just feels like there's something that's starting to take shape. Again, it doesn't mean that you know exactly how things are going to happen, or when things are going to happen, or why things are going to happen. It just feels like right now, there's some sort of evidence that something is working out in your favor or some sort of direction that you're going in right now seems to be panning out so far. Obviously, it's too early to make any real judgment calls on it, but at least something is starting to come through, okay? Something is starting to take shape. Something is starting to take hold. And that I kind of resonate with that as well. Um, and again, I couldn't really explain how it's happening or how it's going to continue to happen or why. It just feels like the period that we've been in lately in terms of lots of big shifts and um, internal shifts that are creating external shifts, it's starting to take shape. It's starting to take hold. Okay, let's continue. What's going on here, please, Spirit? Okay, well, we're back to the Seven of Pentacles now. And the Seven of Pentacles, was it yesterday or the day before? It was sometime this week. We have the Seven of Pentacles here. And on the other side of the deck, however, we do have the Devil. Um, however, this is a positive situation. This is a positive circumstance. Even though we do have the devil energy here, I feel like that's still connected to this Seven of Pentacles, which feels similar to what we were talking about when the Seven of Pentacles came out before, in terms of there was like a, a sense of panic, um, of not really understanding what's happening, why things are changing, what needs to be changed, what needs to be let go of. However, I feel like, and this is maybe, this may be why um, we have something that seems to be starting to take shape, starting to take form, starting to take hold. I feel like you're starting to see some elements of your life, Seven of Pentacles, for the toxic, for the toxicity that it holds within it. Okay. Um, you have the Three of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles, the Knight of Cups. You also have the Three of Swords. And the Four of Swords. So the Three of Swords and the Four of Swords here are talking about something that is being built. And the Four of Swords is giving me a feeling, an energy of taking the time to really settle into it. I did also just here to relax into it, um, but allow things to take shape, allow things to take form. I don't feel like you're rushing anything, um, which makes sense because none of us are really in an energy of trying to rush or force anything right now. However, with the view of something that may be toxic here, some element that may be toxic here, um, it feels like you're making a conscious effort to adjust that, to change that, to remove yourself from that situation. And it does feel like you've been doing it for some time, and that's why now things are starting to come to fruition with the star here. Now. Three of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, and the Knight of Cups. Okay? 
the three of cups here in my to me it speaks to a, a, a collective energy and it feels like it has to do with something you were dealing with in the past some sort of relationship or some sort of maybe business venture or just a social group a social dynamic or a a collective mentality that it seems that you've received some sort of independence from it's like you stand on your own now with this ten of pentacles you see this is not the side of the ten of pentacles where we see other people and a family we see someone a very mature man who seems to have built quite a life for himself um, and <laughs> with the dog here that's on this card it feels like there's a sense of loyalty that you started to come to an understanding of. And I feel like there could be a number of people that don't, that maybe don't um, hold that same level of loyalty. Okay. But it feels like there's a, there's definitely a completion here with this 10 of pentacles. Um, there's a completion of a cycle and it feels like you've become very mature you've become you've grown up a lot here and you're kind of standing on your own and you're moving forward in a direction that leaves behind this kind of energy this three of cups energy whatever this is for you and it feels like you're walking forward you're moving forward on your own but it, yes you're moving forward in a very independent way however it's a way in which you're being guided by your heart there is a greater sense of heart chakra awareness self-awareness um, and it literally feels like you're walking away from or you're moving away from elements from the past that have been conformist in nature possibly with the devil here but somewhat toxic um, chaining confining because it feels like whatever it is you've come to an understanding of that the situation uh, represented or represents or it, it had within it or the elements of that situation weren't adequate for you seven of pentacles and you see here why with the devil and you also see why with the ten of pentacles because you learn a solid lesson here uh, you've really grown up through this situation I really feel like you've really matured quite a bit but that maturity while some people may look at that or hear something like that and say, oh, well, you're just like a crotchety old man or a crotchety old woman or something like that. No, that's not the case. You've matured quite a bit and it's helped you to hold, open your heart and now you're leading with your heart. And thus, whoops. And thus we have four of pentacles, three of pentacles, I'm sorry, four of swords, three of pentacles, building on something new but allowing things to take shape in their own time, not trying to force anything. The other thing that I want to say about this Four of Swords, look at the fire that's going on behind this guy. And this guy, doesn't this guy on this card look like this guy here on the Ten of Pentacles? So it feels like in some cases, some of you may just be letting something burn down, letting something implode, letting something just go, releasing it. But you're releasing it and in order to make space for what's being built. So this Four of Swords here also kind of represents the energies of us just taking a break, um, not working too hard, not trying to force anything because it still kind of feels like there's some stuff that's being dismantled here that needs to be let go of to make way of whatever it is is starting to take shape for you. Okay. Okay. Um, let's start clarifying. Uh, yeah, all right. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three, four, and five. Um, 
All right, so what I want to start with is the Ten of Pentacles and the Four of Swords, but I think I want to go with the Four of Swords first because I want to define a little bit of this energy here for you right now. All right, so, okay. Well, look, at the bottom of the deck, you do have the tower. All right, so, um... Yes, there are things that are crumbling to the surface right now. I did just hear that. But I also heard there are also things that are taking shape because of this. Again, clearing space. Clearing space for the new to come in. For the new to be materialized and to manifest and to be realized in your reality. Yeah? Okay, so let's talk about the Four of Swords then. What else is going on? What else can we say about the Four of Swords here, please, Spirit? Uh, what advice do you have for us in terms of this energy here? The lovers. The lovers. The nine of swords is at the bottom of the deck now. Uh, a little bit more, please. Oh. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So at the bottom of the deck, we have this, the Knight of Swords. And then underneath the Knight of Swords is still the tower. Okay. Now, what you have here, you have the lovers. And originally, of course, I was thinking, okay, the lovers is a choice. The, a choice has been made. Um, but what I also got from just this card alone was that um, whatever is shifting and changing in your life is in accordance to a higher sense of self-love, uh, uh, self-awareness also, and a stronger bond, a stronger connection with yourself. Okay, but I wanted a little bit more to understand that. And what I got was justice and the Four of Cups. The interesting thing about this is that when the Four of Cups came out originally, it switched, it turned around and was reversed. And I could I could tell it was reversed just by the movement of the card. But then when I went to go pick it up, it switched around and now it's upright. But the upright meaning really does kind of feel appropriate here. Typically, the Four of Swords is an energy of a missed opportunity or unrequited love or uh, boredom, um, depression, and not taking an opportunity that's being presented to you, whether that be by the universe or some other person around you. In this deck, which is the after tarot, you see this gentleman is pouring that cup out. Like he's taken the cup that was handed to him through that cloud and now he's pouring it out because he's saying, I don't want this. This is not right for me. This is not what I was hoping for. This just doesn't feel, I just don't want this. And of course, this could be a negative energy in some cases, but I don't feel like it's a negative energy here because it's coupled with the lovers and justice. The lovers representing a choice of higher value for you. Um, the lovers is also representing a deeper, stronger bond with yourself and with the universe I just heard. And whatever it is you seem to be pouring out or letting go of here, it's justified. It's bringing balance. You have the Knight of Swords to the Tower. So, oop, to the Ten of Swords under that, to the Nine of Cups, okay? This is all at the bottom of the deck. So it does kind of feel like, even though you may not be so aggressive, I don't feel like there's much aggressive energy here. I feel like this is a very subtle internal situation, but it really does feel like you're fighting for the dismantling, or I kind of wanted to just say the dismemberment. Yikes, that's graphic, but the dismantling of this situation to bring it to a close. You're fighting for this. You're working towards this. It, it does feel like some of us here are fighting or are working in tandem with the universe to end this situation, bring greater happiness and greater balance to our lives. Nine of Cups, Two of Pentacles. Okay. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. All right, so with that said, let's talk about the Ten of Pentacles here. 
What can we say about the Ten of Pentacles, please, Spirit? The only one thing I want to say about the Ten of Pentacles is that you've really matured. That's the point of the Ten of Pentacles. You've matured here. Lesson complete, cycle complete, maturity on fleek. Ew! <laughs> okay. Last thing we can really, we should really talk about then is the Three of Pentacles. Any advice uh, or insight into what's being built, please, Spirit? You're fighting for this too. Knight of Swords is again at the bottom of the deck. Um, first thing I want to say is keep up the consistent effort you've been holding, you've been putting forth, even if it doesn't look like that typical grind energy. Whatever consistent effort you've been putting into this shift in your life, keep it up. Maintain your alignment. King of Wands to the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords and the King of Wands are amicable energies because the Four of Swords is all about sitting back, taking a break, resting, meditating, working on calming your mind, right? The King of Wands is an energy of confidence, exuberance, self-sufficiency, self-awareness, self, um, sure, in positive aspect, but it's also an energy of not backing down um, going after what it is that you want, but also waiting for the right time to strike. So, like waiting for the window of opportunity to open up before you take any sort of conscious action. Now, um, part of this energy here, part of what's taking shape for you is, the, uh, or, or part of what's helping this happen is that you're allowing things to just keep flowing. So keep going with that, all right? Maintain your sense of confidence, maintain your trajectory, and just don't allow yourself or don't force yourself to do anything that doesn't feel right in the moment, okay? Wait for that window of opportunity to open up. Continue to wait for that window of opportunity to open up. You have one last card here. It is the Five of Cups, all right? So what this is saying here, especially in terms of the Three of Pentacles, whatever seems to be uprooting at the moment. Yes, there are some emotions that you're having to deal with. Focus on this. Focus on facing your feelings, facing the emotions, facing whatever comes up while you have the time for it. Get that done now. Don't push it away. Focus on it. It's here. Allow it to happen. Allow yourself to feel your way through it so that you can clear this up and continue to be prepared to keep moving forward. Yes? So, like I said, allow yourself to feel through this stuff first. Do this emotional cleansing and clearing while you have the time for it, while you have the respite, while you're sitting here waiting for the right time to strike, meditating, clearing, and working. Just allow this to happen because it is necessary. You need this clearing to really make sure there's adequate space for whatever it is that seems to be taking shape, okay? Excellent. Let's close out this reading with our oracle guidance from the mystical shaman oracle. Woo! Throwing shit. <laughs> Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty, kids. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. Ooh. 
Okay, well, we got three. <laughs> I fucking love it. Okay, we've got card 62, Wild Woman. We've got card 29, The Journey. And we got, oh, no, I'm sorry, guys. We got, no, I thought we got four for a second. Okay, and then we got card number 19, Fire. So let's go in chronological order. We'll start with 19, fire. Okay. Fire consumes anything it touches. The flames remind us of the impermanent nature of reality and how situations can quickly transform into beauty or chaos. Fire is passion and its dancing flames invite us to reach to the sky. Warmth and light are heavenly, yet too much heat can scorch us. To fully step into the energy of fire is to be utterly transformed like the phoenix rising from the ashes. The invitation of this card is, warm your hands and your heart by your inner fire. Let it burn away your hardships. Let it consume your pain and your sorrow. Has life become too rigid, too cold, or too superficial? Light a candle or make a bonfire and toss it into the flames and toss into the flames everything that has become stiff and painful. Give it to the fire for rapid transformation. Set your life on fire. Well, doesn't that make sense? Okay. Next, we have card number 29, which does boil down to an 11, the journey. The essence of this card says, the journey is an invitation to step outside the boundaries of your life as you know it. The journey is not a holiday. It is a call to be hermit-like and to go on a pilgrimage into the unknown. There are no maps to the territory you will be exploring, no marked paths or road signs. The invitation says, the time to embark on a great journey is here. Do not linger in the port when distant shores are calling. Fearlessly draw your own navigational charts as you discover the route. When the time is right, as it is now, you will be led true, even when you are not sure of where you are going. It is the departure that is most important. If you miss the boat, a great opportunity will be lost and another ship may not arrive for a very long time. I do wanna read the medicine aspect of this card. The journey is calling you, but the timing is premature. Collecting postcards or fantasies of where you want to go may take over your focus and make you miss your destiny. Other things must be completed first, or you may still be attached to knowing the destination. Remember that the point of the journey is not the destination. It's who you will become as you are transformed along the way. Do not confuse the inner and the outer journey. And that is why it is so pivotal at this moment for you to really allow yourself to deal with anything that's coming up right now, emotionally. That is part of the work that you're doing to help whatever is coming through for you here to take shape, okay? To use this time wisely. Finally, the last card we have is card 62, Wild Woman. Let us see here, here we go. The essence of this card says, when the wild woman dances into your reading, she reminds you of the essence of authenticity and freedom. Divested of all social constraints and cultural conformity, the wild woman holds up a mirror to your essential self, the true essence of who you are and who you're meant to become. She is a reminder of the bright light within each of us that gets dimmed by the restrictions imposed upon us by the expectations of society. She reminds us that in order to be fully present in life, we must uncover that light and let it shine brightly, regardless of the perceived consequences. The invitation of this card says, when the wild woman comes dancing into your reading, you're invited to shine brightly and to know that your true self is being called out to engage the world. This is a symbol that your long-held dream is beginning to take root <laughs> and wants to be expressed. Y'all, you can't make this shit up, man. Your authentic self doesn't fit in a box. 
it needs the freedom to shine. It's time to have courage and step into the light. The wild woman says, shine brightly, dance with abandon, be yourself, and let the great spirit decide what happens. You'll be happy you did. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee on Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye! <laughs>